I am a transgender woman. I was assigned male sex at birth because I was born with a penis, but I've always been a woman. I wasn't born a boy or girl and changed into a girl. I have always been a woman. Gender isn't determined by whether you have an innie or an outie between your legs, and frankly, it's nobody's business. Gender is in your heart, your soul, your mind. I started dressing up in girls' clothes when I was seven or eight. We didn't have internet back then. We didn't have many of those resources. I didn't have the words to say how I was feeling. I didn't hear the word transgender until my 30s. I, 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 I didn't know who I was. I just knew who I wasn't. All of my intimate relationships ended when my girlfriends found out about me. I knew Lorena was very special, so I told her early on. For the past 20 years, she has always been the one person in my life I could count on to see the real me, to see more in me than I could see in myself. Our boys, Alex and Andrew, were born very early, very tiny, and very sick. The happiest moment of my life came when I was finally able to hold them both, my boys, in my arms at the same time for the first time. But I didn't know then that this would be the only time. Andrew passed away two weeks after this picture was taken. My boys taught me to appreciate each special moment and the value of being true to oneself and to live each day fully and without regret. And although I've seen many pictures of me over the years, this was the photo in 2012 that brought me to Sobs. For the first time in my life, it all made sense. I made sense. This was the first time I saw me looking back. And ironic that the place I first uttered the words, I am transgender, was on a beach in North Carolina. I returned home and for the first time to admit my wife something she'd already probably known, I am transgender. This is something you have to do, she said. I just don't know if I can be there on the other side. Well, we are on the other side and I'm still, and still trying to figure out how our family fits together in our new normal. But she remains my rock and my strength. One day around the time of my transition, a seven-year-old Alex and I were playing basketball on our front drive. Two of his buddies drove by on their bike, stopped and stared at us, and Alex picked up his ball and walked over with full convention, conviction and said, she's my daddy. My son has taught me more about acceptance and unconditional love than I could ever teach him, and we have never been closer. Kids aren't bored judging others, they learn that from us. I told my parents two years ago, I was asked to leave the house, and then was told by my father, I no longer have parents. I haven't heard from him since, I haven't seen my mom since. This photo is a reminder of the last time I tried to reach out to them last year. I'd never feared anything more than that one conversation. But fear can hold great power over you if you let it. Fear can protect you from harm, it's true, but fear can also be debilitating, can keep you from trying new foods, visiting new countries, enjoying new experiences. Fear of inviting that nice guy or girl out for a coffee can keep you from finding true love. Fear of being true can also keep you from living. Some of my friends left, but many stayed. A bunch of us guys get together for a monthly movie night called Guys Movie Night. But they had this special meeting after my transition and decided what to do. It's called Guys Movie Night. The next invite I got said, Guys plus one movie night. <laughs> when you're able to be real with people, they are more real with you, and the relationships become deeper and more meaningful. Transgender people are disproportionately underemployed and unemployed. Discrimination in the workplace and throughout society is very hard. I feared that I would lose my work that I love so much, but if I didn't try being me in the place that I loved, I would always regret it. But after my transition, my professional relationships began to thrive. I am more engaging with patients and families and my colleagues. I just don't have to work so hard. This may surprise you, but I'm also Catholic. When I asked my priest if our family could continue to practice our faith, my priest said, I have no idea but we will walk this journey together. And we take our son to church every Sunday. The people of our church have been loving, open, and welcoming. Perhaps we've all realized we don't need our spiritual leaders to tell us it's okay to be kind. Now, so how many of you in here had to prove their gender when applying for a driver's license or a passport or a birth certificate? How do you suppose one proves their gender in a passport office? Fortunately, Alberta is now one of a few jurisdictions where you don't have to virtually drop your pants or pull up your skirt a good ID that matches your gender. When you come out as a transgender woman, many of your options become limited. Where you can work, where you can live, who you can love, where you can travel. Homosexuality is illegal in many countries and they don't make the distinction between transgender people. When you have a male passport looking like me, you could be denied entry, arrested or worse. When I got my passport, I got many of my options back. All fights for human rights seem to come down to the toilet. Some people want to use fear and the need to protect the rest of you from people like us. Here's a secret that they don't want you to know, and I'm probably gonna lose my license in the trans girls union, but when we go to the bathroom, we wanna pee. <laughs> and sometimes poop. 
It's not like we're flashing our bits and pieces around. Truth is, a transgender person is more at risk than anybody else to be harassed or assaulted in a washroom. So we are much more discreet. The last thing we want to do is draw attention to ourselves. A gender-neutral washroom is pretty cool for people who don't, anybody who doesn't feel safe using a segregated washroom, but it is my right to use a washroom that I correspond with because transgender women are women, period. The hardest part of my journey has been finding self-acceptance, and I'm still working at that. Finding validation from within rather than living up to what the world expects of me. Self-acceptance leads to self-love, which leads to self-determination. And was I, why was I finally able to be true to myself, only then could I be true to the people that I loved. When you can bring your whole self to your work, your faith, your role as a parent, student, spouse, friend, or sibling, when you don't have to work so damn hard to hide the truth, everyone benefits. You become more productive. The people around you love being with you. When you can bring your entire self, you not only survive, but the people around you thrive. My journey to authenticity started the day I was born, and it's a journey that will go on till the day I die. It's a journey that's been filled with loneliness, despair, and the most unimaginable pain but I'm on the right track now, and my journey is full of love, kindness, happiness that I never thought was possible. I follow the tracks wherever they lead me and look forward with great hope and anticipation. I used to think being me would be a barrier in my life, but I have found endless opportunity, and I do wish I could say the road is smooth from here. I have found true happiness, it's true, but I still have fears, I still cry tears. But whether telling the world from Parliament Hill or telling myself in the privacy of my own home, I can proudly and honestly say, I'm me, and I wouldn't be anybody else. Thank you.